Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Credit. Today in this video, I would like to talk about some of the key skills that nobody is talking about for data scientists. Um, I got to know about these skills because lately I've been uh, looking into some of the job postings and uh, these skills have been mentioned in those postings pretty frequently. So that's what I thought, uh, let's share this uh, in a video so that it can help a uh, larger audience. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's what I will be discussing in this video and I hope it will help you. But before moving further, if you haven't subscribed to the channel or if you are new here, please go subscribe to the channel and be a part of Programming Credit family and also hit that bell icon so that you get notified each time when a video goes live. And also if you end up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up, it keeps me motivated to make such videos for you guys. So with that being said, let's start our discussion. So the first skill that I would like to mention is it's Git. Uh, Git is a version control, so it makes uh, pretty easy uh, to control your code and manage your code. And if you're working in a team, it will be very easy to collaborate among each other. So Git is a very good tool and uh, you can go back to your previous version. You can uh, save your changes you, uh, and everybody, if you're working in a team setup, you will know who has committed what and what changes had been made. So it's a very good use and useful tool. And also it gives a pretty good uh, impact on your profile when you add Git in your resume or when you have something to show on your GitHub. So it's actually a very good thing to have. So yeah, I definitely recommend uh, learning GitHub or Git. So yeah, uh, that's the first skill that I would like to mention. Now the next one is uh, structuring your project. Uh, by structuring a project, what I mean is uh, when we are actually learning data science or let's say machine learning, deep learning, data or something, we open uh, IPython notebook and we do everything in that Python notebook, right? Uh, but the thing is, uh, when you go to industry, there they have a specific folders for things. Let's say you have SRC folder where you will do your uh, analysis or you will do your data manipulation or those heavy lifting codings that, that you do. It, key, it gets uh, allocated in your uh, SRC folder. And then you will have some other uh, folder like where you keep data and you will have notebook folder where you keep all your IPython notebooks where you will present your output. So things like that. So if you are someone who is um, working with Python, you can look into cookie cutter. And if you're someone who is uh, more towards R, you can see project template. So these are the two very famous uh, project structure uh, which I like so yeah you can check into that and uh, when you will have these things and if you have your uh, projects in this structure and when you put it on git uh, and when uh, some potential employer uh, sees those things it will give a good impact and you will have a very strong portfolio uh, by doing this thing so yeah this is the second thing now the next one is following agile methodology name is pretty self-explanatory right Agile. So in Agile, what do you do? You do things in different iteration. It's not like you start a project and you go till the end, like evaluation of model and all those things. And then you realize, oh, this model is not good. So you go back and again, you start with a business understanding and then you do all the steps again. So that is the waterfall model. Uh, so we don't use that anymore. So we use Agile. What do we do? Uh, we go to business understanding. We take the data, we understand the data, we process it, and then we analyze data and then we realize, okay, this data is not sufficient enough to solve that business understanding or the business problem that we had. Then we go back and we collect some more data and then we process it. So you see, we are doing it in cycles and then we go for modeling and then, then we'll make models and then we realize, okay, this model is not working fine. Then we go back again, we'll be pick a different model and we structure our data in a way that is more understandable by the particular model. And then we make a model and then we evaluate it. So you see, we are doing it in uh, different iterations. So it is, this is what Agile methodology is. Uh, you can also Google or you can see on YouTube, there will be a one or two videos. You will be very well uh, versed with Agile process in a very short time. So yeah, this is also something which you need to keep in mind. Uh, now with that, uh, let's move on to our uh, next, uh, next, next tool that you should know, which is at least one framework like Flask or Django, which will help you deploy your models. So uh, yeah, uh, they, they help you to deploy your model into different uh, servers. You can make a Flask API uh, you, where you made your model or you made your analysis, you made your dashboard or something. Uh, you want to publish it, so you made a Flask API and you can easily put it uh, in uh, Docker or maybe you want to host it on AWS, you want to host it on Heroku, anything, whichever is comfortable for you, whichever you want. So you can learn either Flask or Django. Django is a bit on a heavier side and it is mostly used for web development and to make a full-fledged website. 
So if you don't want to do that, you can stick to Flask. It's a lightweight and it's pretty easy to learn. So I would highly suggest you to learn uh, Flask. Now the last thing which I don't think anybody talks about is communication skills. And I've been seeing uh, this communication skill mentioned in almost all the job postings. And to me, it makes sense. Why? Because as a data scientist, you will have to convey a lot of findings to your stakeholders and uh, may or may not be, they will be from technical background. They won't be able to understand all those statistical terms, right? So you need to be able to uh, convey your findings in a very easier way uh, to someone who is not from technical background. And it's always uh, good to have that skill uh, where you are able to express your thoughts, you are able to express your uh, findings because at the end of the day, your findings will make an impact, not what you did, because uh, uh, you have the data and data is something, information is something. Getting uh, information is important, data is not important for the stakeholder. For you, data is important, maybe for you, uh, information is not that important. So that's the, that is the gap between stakeholders and a data scientist. So you need to bridge that gap using your conversation skills or your communication skills. So that's what uh, I would like to mention that um, you need to have a very good communication skill. You need to be able to uh, express or you need to uh, show your findings in a much simpler way. So yeah, this is uh, what I wanted to discuss in this video. Uh, these are the five skills which I found in almost all the all the job postings and uh, I thought uh, let's share this so that if you are someone who is just getting started uh, you will have some time to get used to all these things and also the good thing about these skills is like uh, you don't really have to put additional time in that so let's say you want to learn git so what you can do is you are doing your project and you just need to push it uh, or you need to just add them you need to commit them you need to push them on your github so you can do all those things while doing your own project <clears throat> and for project structure as well what you can do is uh, always keep a different code or different part of the program or application in different uh, folder structure uh, in a relevant folder structure i should say so that way you will be able to uh, after doing two or three projects you will be very well familiar with how the project structure should work and it will give you a good understanding and agile uh, agile also you can practice like you can uh, take a business problem you can understand it you can collect data you can do things on that and then if you realize okay it is not working out then i will go back it is actually pretty you will feel like it's very common since i i am doing this anyway but what we do is we don't realize that it is called agile and we don't mention it in our resume so you can mention it in the resume so that will give an upper hand to you uh, and for communication, whenever you are done with your project, always try to make a small PPT and try to explain it to yourself. Or if you have some friend, you explain them like, yeah, I did all these findings and what do you think about the findings and uh, do you think it is relevant to the business problem that we had in the starting? So that way you will be able to uh, improve your communication skill as well. And the last uh, flask, yes, it will take some time. You will have to give some extra time to it. Uh, but it won't take much time so if you are very well familiar with uh, uh, python programming it will hardly take a week or so to learn flask so yeah that's there so i think this is it for this video i hope you found this video helpful and if you did please give it a thumbs up and it keeps you motivated to make such videos for you guys and if you're into data science this video is about data scientists so i think you are in data science so the link for the notes uh, is in the description you can download data science notes and hopefully it will help you in learning and you can also join our telegram group we have over 1000 people there and they're helping each other on a daily basis so it would be a good community to join i guess uh, so yeah this is it and to end this video i would like to request you for all the good things like subscribe share like and comment whatever is possible so yeah see you in the next video bye happy learning